Hi everybody. Welcome back to my channel, Dobby Books. And today I'm gonna to do a retake on um, a previous recording I did that accidentally got published. I didn't mean for that to happen, but it happened. It was a presentation on the hinges of history, which is a history series that Thomas Cahill wrote. He meant to have seven books in the series. He got up to six, unfortunately, he didn't make it to number seven. He passed away in 2022. And the, he, it has, it's the, the six books. So the first book is entitled How the Irish Saved Civilization. And the key word here in the series is hinge, hinges of history. So what he was emphasizing was key players, uh, key events or individuals that really made it for Western civilization, that if they had not done what they had done, or if these historical occurrences had not happened, Western civilization probably would not exist, or it would be very, very different uh, than what we see today. So the first one he published was How the Irish Saved Civilization, which was kind of controversial at the time that it was published, I believe in 1995. It was kind of a new concept. And as we go, as I show you the other books, you're going to see how they're all connected to this first book. What he claims in the How the Irish Saved Civilization, that is, it wasn't for the Irish preserving the classical Greek and Latin works, that we would not have had a Renaissance. So that's a really key thing, I would imagine. So what I've done is I've taken a snippet from the introductions or the back covers of the books to give you an idea of what each book is focusing on so you can get a better idea. So when it comes to how the Irish saved civilization, this is the snippet that's gonna let you know. And yet Ireland, a little island at the edge of Europe that has no neither Renaissance nor enlightenment, in some ways a third world country with as John Betjeman claimed a Stone Age culture, had one moment of unblemished glory. For as the Roman Empire fell, as all through Europe matted, unwashed barbarians descended on the Roman cities, looting artifacts and burning books, the Irish, who were just learning to read and write, took up the great labor of copying all of Western literature, everything they could lay their hands on. These scribes then served as conduits through which the Greco-Roman and Judeo-Christian cultures were transmitted to the tribes of Europe, newly settled amid the rubble and ruined vineyards of the civilization they had over overwhelmed. Without this service of the scribes, everything that happened subsequently would have been unthinkable. Without the mission of the Irish monks who single-handedly refounded European civilization throughout the continent in the bays and valleys of their exile, the world that came after them would have been an entirely different one. A world without books and our own world would never have come to be. That sounds intriguing. So the next book in the series is entitled The Gift of the Jews. And here, he states that this is why the Jews were a key player in the establishment of Western civilization. By we, I mean the usual we of the late 20th century writing, of the late 20th century writing, uh, which is when he wrote this, towards the end of the 20th century. The people of the Western world, whose peculiar but vital mentality has come to infect every culture on earth, so that in a startlingly, startlingly precise sense, all humanity is now willy-nilly caught up in this we. For better or worse, the role of the West in humanity's history is singular. Because of this, the role of the Jews, the inventors of Western culture, is also singular. There is simply no one else remotely like them. Theirs is a unique vocation. Indeed, as we shall see, the very idea of vocation, of a personal destiny, is a Jewish idea. The next book in the series, Desire of the Everlasting Hills. And in this, he covers um, the beginning of Christianity in the Middle East. And for this, he says, 
How did an obscure rabbi and minor prophet from a backwater of the Roman Empire come to be considered the central figure in Western civilization? Does this influence, in fact, change the world? Next, Sailing the Wine Dark Sea. And in this, he covers the Greek influence on Western civilization. And that's a long stretch. So it's heading into Old Testament period, into New Testament period, going forward. And he says, In the city-states of Athens and Sparta, and throughout the Greek islands, honors would be won in making love and war, and lives were rife with contradictions. By developing the alphabet, the Greeks empowered the reader, demystified experience, and opened the way for civil discussion and experimentation. So this is book four. Book five looks very different than the other ones. And this one is Mysteries of the Middle Ages. I think you can see that there. It's kind of bright. Oh, oh well. And in this, Cahill states, After the long period of decline known as the Dark Ages, medieval Europe experienced a rebirth of scholarship, art, literature, philosophy, and science, and began to develop a vision of Western society that remains at the heart of Western civilization today, from the entry of women into professions that had long been closed to them, to the early investigation into alchemy that would, alchemy that would form the basis of experimental science. So again, he's, he's, this is now, I'm going to say, late Middle Ages, early Renaissance, he's moving into. And the last one is Heretics and Heroes. This one is now Renaissance, Reformation. Okay, and of this is a really short snippet. It says, this was an age in which whole continents of peoples were discovered. It was an era of sublime artistic and scientific adventure but also of newly powerful princes and armies and of unprecedented courage as thousands refused to bow their heads to the religious pieties, pieties of the past. And of course, he's referring to the Reformation. Um, but what's interesting is if you think it was wise for him to publish this first, because if the, if the Irish had not saved those very precious classical Greek and Latin um, documents, None of this would have happened, which is interesting. And when you get to Middle Ages, what the Irish had saved brought about those early Middle Ages and now into Renaissance and now into Reformation. And I do want to point out really quick, these books are pretty basic, these smaller ones. These are the older ones. This one was published in 95. It does have some black and whites in it, okay? The ones that change, this one here, this is the really different one. It's bigger, look at this. It's bigger than the other ones. I don't know if they republish the series in these larger sizes, which I'm really loving because they have bigger pictures and they're in color. And the basic black and white maps that are in the other books, in this book, are phenomenal. I've got to bring you one. I've got to show you one here. No, that's not the one. There was one that was like a two-page spread, and it was really, really neat. There it is. Look at these maps. That is awesome. And also... Maybe it's because of the theme, yeah, Middle Ages. Because of the theme, the beginnings of many of the chapters are um, very much like the illuminated texts that were made during the Middle Ages. And I want to get the beginning of a chapter so that I can show it to you. Look at this. And I don't know if you can see the page numbers. They're also written in that same medieval style. This book is just filled with beautiful pictures and illuminations 
uh, I think it's just, if I could find more in this series that are illustrated like this and illuminated like this, I would replace these other smaller books with this bigger one. This one is much nicer. Even the pages themselves are thicker than the other books. So you can start with the gift, I mean, excuse me, you can start with How the Irish Saved Civilization, or another suggestion is you could start with The Gift of the Jews, because that's the earlier history. And then you could move into, I would say, Sailing the Wine Dark Sea. And then the third, you could go into, let's see, perhaps Desire of the Everlasting Hills when early Christianity starts. And then from there, How the Irish Saved Civilization, Mysteries of the Middle Ages, and Heretics and Heroes, okay? Or you could do it in the order that they were published with How the Irish Saved Civilization first, The Gifts of the Jews second, Desire of the Everlasting Hills third, Sailing the Wine Dark Sea fourth, Mysteries of the Middle Ages, and then finally, Heretics and Heroes. This is a really interesting, it's, it's a, it's a, unlike, I have a series by Susan Wise Bauer, which is entitled, for example, The History of the Ancient World. This covers world history, so it's not just Western civilization in a general format, okay? Every historian has their perspective, but this one I'm going to say in comparison is very general. Compared to Thomas Cahill, who focuses on pivotal players and why they're so important to Western civilization. All right, so that is it. I wanted to cover that with you. I'm gonna cover a different history series in another video, but I really would encourage you to look into this Thomas Cahill series. It's, a, it's really a neat way to study history with one of the many perspectives. As you know, each historian has a purpose when they're recording history. What are they gonna focus on? When you had Livy, Livy focused on character qualities. He was looking for virtue in certain leaders, something for his readers to imitate. And Thomas Cahill was looking at key events and key people that really made Western civilization. So happy reading, everybody. Press your like and your subscribe button. I'm so glad you spent time with me. Take care.